What's up guys, Cat Protagonist here, and today I will be doing a deck profile on the Dungeon World Adventurous deck with the brand new cards from Level Up Heroes and Adventurers. So, uh, what's the advantage of playing the Adventurers, you may ask? The Adventurer is a different playstyle from the Demon Lords. Demon Lords, you attack with big monsters, however, Adventurers, you are able to rush with so much damage with Link Attacks. So, each Link Attack you do will unlock many benefits for your decks. So for example, Gao is able to restand its allies, so you will be able to do extra attacks. That is fantastic. And I'm really, really excited for this deck because there are so many awesome characters in the dungeon deck. So, without further ado, let's get started with the deck profile. So first up, we play the buddy Gao Mikado. So the temp the Tempstuous Brave Gao. He is one of the greatest dungeon adventurous card that we have right now because he is able to give one monster on your field one crit and resend one of card resend both cards when you are link attacking. So for example if you are link attacking with a Noboru you will be able to resend both the cards. Um in unlike Tetsuya where you only resend one of them. So this guy is able to dish up so much damage easily easy 20 damage with a certain combos for example with Noboru by itself you're able to dish out like 12 damage with two cards two cards for 12 damage is absurd all right so yeah that's the buddy and of course we have the Noboru flag um i really love the flags by panda graphics they actually draw the best they're the best art for cards and most of our secret flags are actually by panda graphics all right so for first um size two monsters we place four copies of windmill knight Noboru so Noboru is actually the mascot for dungeon world and he's actually a very, very powerful card right now. He's a 6-1-5 stats, but he gains a crit when you have two or more other adventurers on the field. Uh, it is pretty much guaranteed because this is an adventurer deck. So it's pretty much a, a 2 crit double attacker that's able to move and when attack hits your opponents, you can actually charge one gauge. So it's a combination of all the, the history of Noboru and El Kiyote. Because El Kiyote is able to gain gauge when attack hits, and we have a double attack that is able to gain gauge as well. So it is a fantastic monster. At a cost of one gauge, you have a very, very powerful solid set of 615, 625 basically. Double attack and he has moved to protect your life. So it is one of my favorite cards in this deck. And most uh, the best of all is it con when combined with Gao, you will be able to deal 12 damage with two cards. Uh, I'll be going through the combos later and I'll show you how you can do 26 damage in one turn. That's pretty cool. Alright, so it's four copies of Noboru. Uh, four copies of Sosets. Immortal Sword Sage Sosetsu. Uh, Sosetsu is Durandal's um, buddy. Sosetsu is finally has become a card. He's a, he's a hybrid of Dungeon World and Legend World, so you can actually use him in Legend World. In Dungeon World, his main um, his main abilities is, is he is able to uh, move and protect your life, and he's a size 2 monster. 6 2 1 stats. Um, it's okay to have low defense because you have the Soul Guard to protect, um, protect you. Core cost, put the top card of the deck into this card so and pay one gauge. So a one gauge for a really tanky card is so dang good. All items on the field cannot be destroyed by opponent's card effects. This is very important because Dungeon World has one has very, very powerful weapons. However, if destroyed, it is pretty much useless. So you want to protect your weapons. And the second ability is when an attack on your when a item on the field attacks, you can put a soul from a monster on your opponent's field to drop zone. So it is very good against uh, stuff that have soul guards such as Dragon Zwei, any soul guard monsters can remove their soul. Even a Torah you can remove their soul. So it's a fantastic card. It has move and soul guard. So you usually call it to the side and he has a soul guard. And your opponent's turn you can move with center. He can guard two attacks for you. So I really like him. Um, he's just there if you are pretty much tanking to wait for an opportunity to strike to OTK. So this is pretty much an OTK slash balance deck. Yeah. So size one, the most important card, my buddy, aka the temp. Tempestuous Brave Gal. Uh, he's the brand new card from the set. This is the triple rare. I believe he is the boss monster in this deck because his ability is so good. So 3, 2, 1 stats for a size 1 is fine because his main ability is his uh, link attack ability. So link attack most likely if you're gonna partner with a certain monsters, you'll be you easily hit up to 9k attack power. So it's it's fine. So when this card enters the field for this turn. An adventure monster on a few games plus one critical. So usually I give one critical to Noboru. Since um, he potentially become a triple attack with Gao, I give him it makes him a three crit, so you can three crit three is a nine crit monster. This is how you achieve your 12 crit combo. Let's battle together. When this card links attack with another adventurer, choose adventurer on your field and you may pay on gauge. If you do stand the card and 
standard chosen card and this card. So for example, I'll attack with Noboru, he resend you double attack, then you link attack, pay on gauge, both of them resend. So you can attack another three, another three, another two. So that's how it pretty much works. A fantastic card, a very very powerful card. And it's a Thunder Empire card. Unfortunately it won't be really you won't really use in Thunder Empire because it only supports adventurers. So yeah, uh, four copies of Gao. Next up, four copies of Tasuku. Tasuku is also another uh, awesome card. It looks so beautiful. I love the blue color scheme in this, in, in the card design. Call cost, pay one gauge and one life. Counter, act, activate, and void of the future. If you have six or less life, you may call this card from your hand by calling its call cost. You may only activate this uh, this name ability once per turn. So, um, the reason why this card is pretty awesome is because, uh, let's let's go through this last ability first. When this card enters the field, destroy a size 2 or less monster on your opponent's field. So um, it's a good card because it gives you control over your opponents. Um, especially if you're calling this on your opponent's battle, opponent's turn. Uh, you need a blocker. Oh no, I'm in danger. Alright. Tosuku to the rescue. I'm calling to center. Protect my center. I can bomb one of a size 2 monsters. So that way I can actually... Uh, you basically lose a monster plus... You lose an attack and it blocks. So it's a very good defensive slash offensive card. Reason why I say offensive because uh, if you're six out of less, let's say you already attack with uh, Noboru and Gao, attack, attack, attack. Uh, oh no, I need two more crits to end your opponent. All right, go in there to Suku and do two more damage. So it is a, it is a pretty uh, cool card because it can protect you and uh, give you extra attacks. Fantastic. And not, let's not forget the, the trio of Triple D Gaito. Uh, pay one gauge when this card links attack with another card. Destroy a monster on opponent's field. If you do, put the same number cards top deck of card equals to the destroyed card size and you gain life and deal damage to your opponent equals to the number of cards in the drop zone. Uh, that is very cool because uh, first of all, you gain life, you mill their drop zone and you deal damage to them. So uh, of course, you there's a lot of side shit in this format. So you could like, link attack to the center, destroy a size 3. Alright, I'll deal you 3 damage because I've destroyed a size 3. A very powerful card. Yep. I love to link him with, with her because with her you can like just totally do a lot of damage. You destroy size 3, then you do another 2 damage, then you do another 2. That's like 7 damage in one in one link attack. Yeah. Alright, so 2 copies of Paruko. I like to play different characters because they are so, so much fun to play. I try to make the deck as efficient as possible to do as much damage as I can. And Paruko is seemed to be one of those cards that can do so. When this card links attack, choose a card on your opponent's hand at random and review the chosen card. If the card is a monster, deal 2 damage to your opponent. So this effect alone makes her potentially a 3 crit monster. And if it's review a spell, you can gain 2 life. So it's either either way you're going to get a plus and you can see your opponent's hand. Looking at your opponent cards in your hand is very good. It gives you the advantage to predict uh, future plays. For example, oh, I, I saw a green dragon shield. So I know that you have a green dragon shield. And that's what Paracro is meant to use for. To spy on opponents, so yeah, she's just pretty fun to play. Uh, four copies of my secret tech, Empress Queen Ageha. All right, since I'm playing a tr a Gal formation deck, I wanna have a boomerang dragon to clear my center so that my weapon at can attack. This is the reason why I play her. All right, so what she does is uh, text up. When this card links attack, you may put up to one card from your opponent's drop zone to the bottom of the deck. You do gain one life. All right, the reason why I use her. Her ability is because sometimes against uh, decks like Dragon Zui or even uh, Abigail Darkness, you can actually send back their Abigails. You can sending stuff from the drop zone back to the bottom of your opponent's deck is actually very useful. This format, and of course, you can gain one life, it's pretty nice. Most importantly, she will bounce back at the if you link attack, you can bounce back to your hand so you can clear the center. So, you know, sometimes I like doing attack, it goes like hand so that my weapon can attack, attack. So her main use is just to push in for extra damage, get a little bit of healing, and disrupt your opponent's plays. Yeah, and, and she's actually one of my favorite characters because I like the Schneck monster. <laughs> Alright, so that's pretty much the monsters. Let us go to spells. For the spells, we play 4 copies of Mission Card Adventurous Guild Ibo Academy. So Ibo Academy in the alternate world is a um, guild for adventurous. So what it does is... Uh, this is a set card, counter, during attack phase, return an uh, adventure monster from your field to your hand. If you do, call another adventure monster with a different card name back to the field. So it's great because um, stuff that you call back will be in standing. So basically this card just say that you can gain an additional attack. 
So I really love this card because it helps push your game. Alright. Four copies of uh, Form Party. Form Party is, I believe they have an error on this card. It's supposed to be Form Party, similar to the old card. But this is, uh, the, the name is wrong. It's just Form Party actually. And the art is just nice because it just features the brand new characters from uh, Bodyfight X. So it's a set card when another mission on the card name is set on the queue, gain one life and choose an adventure from your deck and put it into your hand, shuffle your deck and put this card in the drop zone. So basically, uh, what you can, this is basically a searcher for the deck. It's very consistent because you will be able to search any adventure item, spell or impact. Uh, I actually play impact in this deck, so uh, impact helps push for game. So usually if you have multiple copies in this hand, it is awesome because you could form party, call form party, so I can search one, any card you need. And can over form party the drop zone. Search more cards you need, form party. Or add, and finally end it off with uh, Ibo Academy. So you can search so many stuff. So basically this is like your search search spell for any adventure card. This is one of the reasons why um, Dungeon World is one of the most consistent decks because you'll be able to search so much stuff with form party. Now time for some defensive spell. Play four copy of Queen's Queen Seans of Cascade. Basically, um, when you're taken that you're gonna take damage, and you have a monster in the center, you reduce the damage by three. So yeah, just a basic nullify without any cost. Four copies. Four copies of Divine P Protection of Shemshana. Uh, it's basically a green dragon shield with one gauge cost. I think they don't want to give Dungeon Wars um, good negate just because they have. They try to make the Dungeon World a rush deck, so yeah. You sacrifice a bit of defensive power for loads of attack in this deck. Two copies of Hidden Crossbow, perfect counter for uh, Demio Sword Dragon back then. It's still a good card because it's a free cost. Destroy any side 3k and below defensive monster. Two copies of my favorite, Pillar of Fire. Back then, this card just wrecks Thunder Knight so bad. Uh, pay one gauge, destroy a 6k or less defense on your opponent's field. So you can destroy Halberd Dragon back then. Now you can still destroy a lot of stuff because there are tons of cards that are like. 5k and 6k and below. So 6k is the magic numbers for most cards now. So it's good control. If your opponent attacks you, you can just blow them off. Weapons, we play 4 copies of Magic Sword Eater Storm. Eater Storm is one of my favorite weapons from the set because it is it has a built in double attack. So it could cost pay 1 gauge and 1 life. All adventurous monster on your field gives 1k attack and 1k defense. Help you run through bigger monsters. Second ability is when an adventure on your few links attack for this turn, this card gains double attack. So basically, in this deck, you will be link attacking because link attack gives you so much pluses. So this is a pretty much guaranteed double attack, which makes this such a great weapon because uh, double attack means it's a four crit weapon potentially. All right, two copies of the impact. Dead and Crush. Really love the art for Dead and Crush. Uh, it is a classic Trow deck. I believe you can't get these anymore. This is so damn rare. Alright, so it's a very good impact. It's a 2 gauge for 3 crit impact. So you may only cast this card if your opponent has 3 less, three life or less and you have an adventure monster on the field and you have a weapon equipped. Deal 3 damage to your opponent. This card cannot be nullified and the damage cannot be reduced. So it is a Gargantua Punisher for uh, Dungeon Adventurers. A very good card actually. And yeah, it just helps uh, finish out your opponent. Alright, so let bet you guys are curious on how we can do the 25 crit combo, if I'm not wrong, 25 crit damage combo deck. So let me show you some cool stuff. So pretty much you're guaranteed to crit weapon with all the search power. So some of the monsters you want to have is Gao and Noboru. You... Okay, I can minimally guarantee you at least uh, 20, almost 18 crit damage. If you want 20 crit, you might have, you might have to luck sack a little, but this uh, is doable, it's easy to do. Most importantly, it's just these two cards. This, uh, this, you just need a weapon and these three, easy 18 crits. So let me show you how I do it. So, alright, let's say I have an item equip. I call Noboru to the field. I call Tasuku to the field. Alright, so let's begin. Kotosuku and I have the set spell for an extra attack. Alright, first attack. I will I will just attack or link attack with Queen Tasuku. That's three critical. Let me use a life counter. Do I have a life counter? No, I don't have a life counter. So that is three critical. Three critical. Return her back to the hand. 
Alright, so since he's rested, I'll activate Eyeball skill. Bouncing back to the hand. And call another monster. I'll call Gao Mikado. Gao Mikado skill. When enter the field, give a crit. I'll give the crit to Naboru. So Naboru is now a 3 crit monster. With Gao being 2 crit. So I do crit at 3 damage already. Uh, I'll use solo with Noboru. Do another 3 damage. That's 6 damage. Noboru double attack. Restand. And then I'll link attack Gao and Noboru. Gao skill. Restand both of them. So... Uh, Gao and Noboru is 5 crit, so we have 6 crit, 11 crit in total already. We send both cards, so 11 damage. Another 3 critical, 14 damage. Another 2 critical, another 2 critical will be 16 damage. Then another 2 critical for uh, double attacking weapon, 16, 18, 20, 20 critical. So then you can call Tasuku from the hand, Tasuku will come out. And then Gao will, since you can counter skill and just cut the Suku out, uh, that's pretty much 20, but if you want to do, if you want to overkill your opponent, I don't know why. 20 is pretty much anything will die, even Zui. You can attack with the Suku, 22 damage, then finish off with Dead and Crush. Yeah, that's pretty much a combo. Um, it's easy to get 20k damage and you just want to show off with like 25, how this how you get 25 uh, damage in one turn. Woohoo, so cool. So that's pretty much a deck profile. So, so if you enjoyed this deck profile and wish to support my works, please check out buddy-mart.com. Links are in the description box down below. We build and sell buddy fight decks from the latest set. And remember, even if you don't buy, I will still love you. So thanks for watching and keep on buddy fighting. Rawr.